Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to More with Mindy. I'm Mindy Barnett, and this is the second episode of my new talk show. I'm joined by Janice Armstrong, who is a well-seasoned journalist. She is part of the Philadelphia Inquirer. You're the Metro editor. And she's also a columnist with the Philadelphia Daily News. And she's one of my best friends. So I'm very, very blessed to have you here. Thank you so, so much for being a part of the show. And my second guest. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Mindy. So tell me a little bit about your very long career, Janice. <laughs> and that's still booming, by the way, everybody at home. My long, long career. Your long career. Because I've been at it so long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah. I actually started in 1991. Wow. It's a long time to be at the same job, but it's changed a lot over the years. I started off the Daily News, but now I'm at the Inquirer, and I've had a lot of different jobs. And my current one is my favorite. Metro is it? Yeah, it is my favorite job, because I get to do whatever I want. And uh, Metro Columnist is That's a pretty cool. big title, I think. That is a very big title. Yes. So when you say you get to do whatever you want, do you mean like you can cover pretty much any story you uh -huh. want? Uh-huh, exactly. From news to fun things like uh, Friday at the Pennsylvania Women's Conference, Serena Williams was in town. So oh. I got to go over there and listen and see if I was going to write about that. Or today I can do a, a television segment. Um, you know, practically anything I want. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. you free range. Free range. So national news, local news, crime, features, fun stuff. Very cool. But you didn't just wake up one morning and that just kind of fell in your lap. You obviously worked extremely hard to get to where you are. So let's talk a little bit about what you did, why you wanted to become a journalist, um, why you ended up in Philadelphia, because you're not a native of Philadelphia, although people reading your column or reading about, you know, your stories will assume that we've been here a long time, but they'll think you were because you speak <laughs> as if you are, which is very hard to do, I know firsthand. So let's talk a little bit about that. What inspired you to get into this crazy field? Well, you know, like you, my, my parents were school teachers. Okay. My mother was a school librarian, and she used to bribe me to clean up the kitchen by bringing me big stacks of books. I didn't realize I was being conned at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Smart woman. <laughs> should take those tips. Yeah, yeah, and I got obsessed with reading and writing, and I was that little nerd at school who would write newspapers up and, send, and pass them out to my friends. If I didn't have any news, I would make the news up. Hey, the, the real fake news. But uh, it was just fun. I enjoyed doing it. And then when I got to college, I realized there was a major where you could, uh, where you could major in something like that, where you could actually major in journalism. So I thought, I mean, they'll pay me to write stories, and I'm doing it all the time for free anyway. Why not? It seemed okay. like the right thing to do. So uh, I majored in journalism at Howard University, and here I am That's all fantastic. these years later. Was this your first job? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. No. So let's talk about that. Oh no, we don't okay. talk about all those. I mean, th those are some tough days right out of school, making no money, moving all around the country, working in really small markets, and yeah. just being so homesick. Those were some hard days. But I was always told that that's what you got to do to build a career because nobody, like in the major market, was going to pay attention to you till you had some real good experience. So I did what I had to do. I mean, Mindy, I went to Oregon. One day I looked up, I was in Oregon. All you were? Up. Yeah. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, I don't talk about well, that. It was a rough time in my life. But that's a beautiful state. It was and a beautiful state. It rained every single day. Did it? Every single day. I mean, the sidewalks would get slick from moss or whatever that was that would grow on it. Oh. But uh, I covered some really good stories. I concentrated on work. And one day I looked up and I was in a beet field chasing behind a tractor, a one-legged beet farmer. That's and really it was a funny. I was doing. It was funny. It turned out to be a good story. It was really well read. So it was a great experience. And for someone who grew up in Washington, D.C., there I was in Oregon. I know, you know, I can kind of relate as you're saying the beat field. I remember doing, I, when I was in news, I was in Louisiana, but I used to tell people, everybody would say, oh, you were in New Orleans? I said, no, not exactly New Orleans. <laughs> I was in Monroe, um, which was an amazing city or town, whatever, you know, and it was a great experience. But I used to tell people that would ask me, where am I living? I said, I'm living in places you'd never want a vacation, <laughs> you know, but, it, but you grow a lot. But anyway, back to your beat story, I covered like a car and farmer so yeah so you've been there you yeah. know what i'm talking about yeah yeah you know it's tough Where, where'd you go from oregon see kansas city okay well that's at least a little bit of oh a yeah yeah more bustling it was a great it was a great city. move so i worked at the kansas city star for a little while before i made my way back east and uh 
eventually ended up coming up this way. That's awesome. So it was a lot of little little steps. I would stay at a job about a year and a half, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, I got to get out of here or I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy. I know, but I'd you pay like your dues. $200 a week I think I was making. Whoa. <laughs> but then I had a corporate apartment, so it wasn't that bad. But $200 Oh, that's a not week. bad. I'd go and interview these poor people. <laughs> I think I was making, they, they had more than I had. <laughs> I know. I know. I remember doing a story, not to turn it back on me, but like just really quickly, it's a funny one. I was doing a story back in that same market I mentioned in Monroe on the Salvation Army, and it was their Christmas campaign, and somehow got into talking about food stamps and what you needed to have like in terms of finances to qualify, and I remember thinking to myself, I definitely can get food stamps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I more than qualify for them, but you know, you do what you have to do. It's right. a, you know, a love and, you know, passion certainly, and it's in your blood, it's in your blood. What can you do? Maybe give some for cash, but. <laughs> yeah, I was interviewing some people about a government cheese giveaway. And I remember starting to lick my lips thinking, government cheese, huh? Because <laughs> I could have qualified. Aye, 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 <laughs> just a little yeah. bit of money. But that, you know, that's just the early days. Right. Things got better. My parents helped me out. You right. know, I had my, right. you know, I act like I was so poor, but I had my dad's credit card in my, in my wallet. Oh, I had that's my, nice. You know, yeah. I had a really nice corporate apartment. It was yeah. just tough and getting used to being out there on your own. Yeah. But I got a lot of great experience and ended up before long at the Washington Post. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to hear a little bit more from Janice and what she sees coming up in Philadelphia in 2019 in just a minute. Stay with us. Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Assurance. It's a word, a touch, a look that sparks a feeling. Peace of mind that everything will be all right. These are the moments that inspire us to do more than you'd ever expect from a car insurance company at a price that's less than you'd expect. This is more than just insurance. This is Plymouth Rock Assurance. Visit us at PlymouthRock.com. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're joined with Janice Armstrong from the Philadelphia Inquirer, mm -hmm. Philly Daily News, all kind of together, which is a, an interesting new development, right? You all right. are sort of teammates now? Yeah, teammates, which is a real switch because we were such fierce competitors. I mean, before, if you were in the ladies' room and you were talking about your story, you wouldn't talk until you checked under the stalls to see if anyone from the Inquirer was in there and might be listening. So we were wow. sister publications, but very, very competitive. What if they were hiding and they were standing on the toilet seat and they had their recorder on? Well, because we were the <laughs> Daily News, we would have sussed them out. <laughs> but that's the way it was. And it made it fun because, you know, you got up every morning and you wanted to beat the other, uh, the other publication. Right. Now we're all in one place. We're all in the same newsroom, the Inquirer, the Daily News, and the Philly, and Philly.com. We're all working together. And that's been a bit of an adjustment, but I think it was the right move at the right time. There's been a lot of changes in the industry, and you know, we've been through a lot of different yeah. owners, lots yeah. of ups and downs, yeah. bankruptcy. Yeah. And I think we're still lucky to be here, and we now work as a team. And you're stronger. I think we're stronger. Through together. trial, you get stronger. Yeah, we're stronger together than yeah. I think uh, as then we were competing. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about um, maybe some stories that stick out in your mind. If there's one or even maybe two that were really profound um, in, in your time in Philadelphia. Hmm. I know that beat farmer story is definitely <laughs> high on your list, <laughs> although that probably molded you into the journalist that you are today. But anything in Philadelphia that really well, kind of like have an impact on you as well as your readers, obviously? Well, there was that time I wrote about... Uh, I was writing about dating, and I put an ad on Match.com and met a man. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> and he actually decided to keep him, yeah, if I don't, if I remember correctly. Him. That's right. That was right. That's the best uh, story assignment I ever did. I think. That's fantastic. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. So you were looking into like what online dating. That's sort of when online dating was just sort of like turning a curve and becoming more acceptable. It was totally new. It was still in the weird zone. Yeah. Like that it was like. Not thing that pe people, if you did it, you didn't really talk about it. Not like now. It was, your, it was a stigma. Yeah, there was you a stigma. You were sort of like it. not like cool. Like you had to be really desperate to go right. online to meet somebody. Right, I right. I wasn't desperate, of course, though. No, no, no you were not, not at all. We, we no, were working we were on sexy, sexy single, single all the time. <laughs> that was a big project, having right. a lot of fun with that. And I thought, oh, what can it harm? Let me do a story on it. So I signed up, spent the $30, met this fabulous, wonderful man, ended up getting engaged to him a year later. And 
we've been together ever since. He's a great catch. Thanks. He Thanks. definitely is. Thanks. Let's give him a shout out. Cameron yeah. Turner. Hey, You're Cameron. the best. We love you. <laughs> um, so let's, you mentioned Sexy Single. That's mm -hmm. how we became really close That's and right. then became personal friends from that, um, which was an amazing, you know, uh, more than a decade long project that you did every summer. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, Mindy, that was so much fun. Every year we would go and we'd gather together the most fabulous singles in Philadelphia. I think we have pictures of it, maybe. Yes. Okay, go well, ahead. We, Continue. We, I think we yeah. do have a few. Yeah. Where we would just get people from media, art, sports. And remember, you would go out and seek out some of these people for it. We would put our heads together and say, Mindy, go, go get that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'd go and we'd get this great group of people. Plus, people would mail in photos and suggest people. And sometimes we'd have 500 people to go through and we'd have to narrow it down to 25 or so of the sexiest singles in Philly. And that was really tough, wasn't it? It, it was. It wasn't as fun as it looked because it no. was hard work. Some of those singles were, well, some of them are lovely, obviously, mm -hmm. but remember some Code Reds without naming names? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had a secret. We had a code red. Like, um, okay, call in the backup. Yeah. yeah, no, but it, it was it was a lot of work because there's a lot. We we would get so many amazing nominations, yes. and it was very difficult to sort of like determine have that you know authoritative uh, power, if you will, to pick who you deserve to be in because so many of them probably could have been made it. It was just a matter of trying to make it diverse and having different age ranges, right? And good have a good balance, right? Yes, and then we had to find a fabulous location to shoot yeah, in every year. Fun. That's where you would come in. Yeah. And you'd come up with something every year and I'd be like, what, Minnie? How are we going to make this work? And somehow you always made it work. Oh, like, thanks. It was fun. Atlantic City on the beach. Yeah. Remember the time we were out there doing the swimsuit shoot and it was pouring rain outside? And it, it was pouring rain. Was I out there with you? No, we were, we were inside and luckily we weren't going to shoot until the afternoon. Okay. And then the rain stopped. But I remember it was like 9 o'clock in the morning. We're in Atlantic City. I forgot what hotel you had us staying in. Yeah, yeah. And it was pouring rain and I was like, a swimsuit shoot. Oh, I remember that. We were, I think we were at Caesars that, no, we were at the Taj Mahal that year. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was a crazy, that was a crazy time. But it worked out. It worked out. It always did. And we always ended it with this fabulous party that we would have in Philadelphia that the Daily News threw. And yes. it was always like a really good time. Remember the one at Stratus Lounge and we had all the swimsuit fashion show that was part of it? Yes. <laughs> so that was so, so much fun. And we have to figure out something else to do. Like, yes. yeah, maybe we'll do like a more with Mindy must or something like that later uh -huh. this summer. We'll figure it out. But um, okay, so anything else coming up with the with Philadelphia? Anything we should be like keeping our eyes open oh, to in 2019? You know, there's always something popping in Philadelphia. Yes. And uh, one can of you things, give us any scoop? Well, actually, yes. I got some fun things planned. I'm, um, one of them is I'm doing sort of like it's a takeoff of sexy singles, except it's not as sexy, I don't think. But it, uh, community awards where we're oh, going to highlight that's people. Oh, sexy. Okay, good. I'm glad yeah, you like that definitely. idea. Definitely. 2019. I'm going to highlight people who I think haven't gotten the recognition they deserve, but who definitely deserve to be pointed out for what they do in their communities to make it a better place. That's We're fantastic. going to give them a nice trophy. I'm going to write about them, put their photos in the paper, and maybe have a reception where we can come meet them and uh, really just sort of salute them for what they do. Like real heroes. Real heroes. Of our neighborhood. Everyday heroes. That's fantastic. Heroes. And it could be people that give back philanthropically or right. just, you know, just really good in terms of like keeping the city intact. Or, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. So if anyone has any suggestions of people who yeah. they would like to nominate, they can email me at armstrj at phillynews.com. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'll include that. We're going to be um, pushing this out on social media later. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back, and we're going to find out what Janice Armstrong's intermission is. Stay with us. <laughs> My name's Casey Price, host of a brand new show called Everyday Elder Care. My show will help you take the stress out of caring for your elderly loved one by educating you about options and solutions you may not even know exist. Tune in every Tuesday at noon on RVN TV. We'll see you there. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood, our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list, and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date, the winning business deal, a memorable family celebration.
Welcome back, everybody. I'm Indy Barnett, joined by Janice Armstrong mm -hmm. with the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, we are going to segue now into what I like to call the intermission segment, where everybody shares a little you know, snippet of their life where they needed to make a change, take a pause, and also talk a little bit about what motivates you and gets you to the next level personally as well as professionally. So is there any one minute or time that stands out in your mind as your intermission? I say this because I, I recently wrote a book that focuses on that sort of stuff called intermission. So go ahead. And it was good too because oh, I read it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> it was you. fantastic. You know, I've had a lot of times in my life where I've had to put my life on pause, like in college, Mm -hmm. I remember having to put my life on pause and rethink things a little bit as a career woman. And I think most recently, I had to put my life on pause after the death of my father. Oh, that's a good, that's a really good one. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, I was so busy. I mean, it's not a good encounter. I mean, that's a good one to, to mention. Go and ahead. it was a good that, and it was good that I did it because I was so busy being Miss Career Woman. You know, I was writing columns. Sure. Fr lots of front page, sto uh, front pages and mm -hmm. uh, doing a lot at work. I was keep holding it down at home. I was doing the caregiving thing, going back and forth from Philadelphia to DC, mm -hmm. taking food, meals, things I thought my father would like to eat, doing everything I possibly could because I knew that once he was gone, I didn't want to have any regrets. I mean, right. I was on the go. Plus, I was meeting my trainer. I was working out. I mean, I was superwoman. You I was making myself nuts. You still kept, yeah, I'm pretty famous for that. <laughs> um, you still kept up with your personal I pace? I did everything. I did that's everything. Cra that's crazy. I know. I you know. must have been exhausted. I didn't feel it because I was like, uh, you know, it was life or death. Right. But uh, my father ended up dying peacefully, mm. you know, surrounded. Sorry. He was, he, that's he. He lived a long life. He mm -hmm. uh, was surrounded by his family, people who he loved most. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so and you paused and then you needed a recharge. So in that pause, what exactly did you do to no, pull yourself out of that time of grief <laughs> and, you know, obviously devastation? You lost your father. Yes, for a little bit I didn't do anything. I just sort of allowed myself to be still. And that's something I hadn't really allowed myself to do for a while. And then I started. I, then I started coming back to me. I started running with a vengeance, and I finished my first marathon. That's fantastic. I did something similar mm -hmm. in terms of running. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, mm -hmm. getting myself out there and moving. And you shared with me um, that that actually cleared your mind and gave you a healthier mindset yes. to tackle day-to-day -day tasks. Right. right. Yes. And instead of running around as frantically as I was before, trying to hold it all together, because I had this incredible running schedule to do a marathon, you're running five hours like on a Sunday. You can't do anything else. No, you're not going to hang out with your friends the night before. Right. No, you can't drink. Right. Because <laughs> you got to get up and you got to get out there and you got to run for five hours. Right. So it, I cleared my schedule and I just did what I had to do and I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran and I healed. So that's fantastic. So you use that running and obviously leaning on prayer and, and yes. sp the spirituality to pull you out of your, you know, intermission or slump, if you will. Out of my slump right. where I was just sort of, you know. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. So, you know, maybe exercise or tips like that or mm -hmm. is good advice for people watching mm -hmm. at home if they're not feeling completely motivated on this Monday. How about just in general, like what motivates you to get up every day? You know, I love what I do. You know, this is my what I. This is what I give back to the world. Mm -hmm. This is how uh, they say those to whom much is given, much is required. I give back this way. I go and I come find stories that aren't being covered, particularly those in underserved communities. And I go and I try to shed a little light. Not too long ago, um, we had a quadruple shooting in Philadelphia, and it wasn't covered by the newspaper. Not one word. A quadruple shooting with two homicides in it. And Why? Anyway, it's just so much it going was missed, on. Right. Just so much going on. Wow. And then I heard about the mother who was killed in the in it. She was twenty two years old and she was cradling her baby in her arms. Oh my god. She goodness. was shot over a dozen times, legs, her chest, her arms. But she managed to cradle her baby and take her baby to safety. So I went and I sat down with her friends who were all broken up, one of them who was with her that night and had taken a bullet to the hip. Oh wow. And I sat with them and I talked with them and I think as destroyed as they were it gave them a lot of joy to tell their story of their friendship that they had with this woman, the friendship the four of them had. And before long, they were laughing and telling me silly stories about getting drunk and going to parties. And we sat there and we laughed. The girl's still sitting there with a bullet in her hip. Wow. Talking about her friend who had yet to be buried. Wow. But we laughed and we focused on the positive. And I 
made the story about that, and I hope that will help them in their healing. I'm and sure give them it will. To they, so they were able to celebrate their friend's life and to let them and know give the them community some, care. Right, exactly. They weren't in it alone. Right. Even though Philadelphia didn't pay much attention to that awful night when they had that quadruple murder, mm. to show them that Philadelphia cares. People care about you. Yeah. And uh, you're not forgotten. You're in a very special field, that's for sure. I mean, I, when I, the short time I was in it, I felt very privileged to be in, in that position to, you know, be able to make a difference in people's lives and things like that. So you're doing an, a tremendous job and a huge service Thank you. to Philadelphia and the greater Philadelphia region. I want to tell you that. Thank you, Mindy. You're very, very welcome. It's well-deserved, I assure. Um, so as we kind of conclude, um, mm -hmm. is there any other two cents of, of information you want to share about anything in general and people read the paper today or watch TV real quick I'll be brief because we don't have a lot of time and okay. we don't have a minute I think um, you know I think people are feeling a little down and stressed out because there's a lot of negative news is there anything that you can say I mean, it's important to know what's going on in the world right it's important to know what's going on in the world and that this too shall pass this too shall pass and I hope people will follow me on Instagram at Janice Armstrong Daily News Twitter, Janice Armstrong, and Facebook as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having You're me. Oh, my pleasure. Your stories are phenomenal. And we will see you all back here next week at 10 a.m. with more, more with Mindy. See you then. <laughs> Enjoy your Monday, everybody. Bye-bye.